All right, I think we will go ahead and get started. Um, note to self, next time I let somebody else be the DJ of the doorbell because it's gonna be distracting for just a few moments. All right, um, I'm Karen Venus. I'm the CEO here at Sarah Christian Village and I just wanna welcome everybody for taking time out of your day to um, come on and listen to what we um, have to talk about as far as it is um, in respect to the COVID-19 vaccine. That is the, uh, the hot topic of discussion. And I apologize because uh, there are several people joining all at once. Um, I'm gonna give it just another second because this thing is just, is. Uh, Okay, as I said, I, I just wanna thank everybody for joining us today. We hope that um, today we'll provide you with important information as we, um, as well as answer questions that you have about the COVID-19 vaccine process um, and how the administration um, will be, what we'll be utilizing here at Sarah Christian Village. Once everybody gets in, I won't be dist distracted. I am so sorry. Um, but today, today is a great day for Kentucky and several long-term care facilities across the whole state are rejoicing because it's a uh, vaccine day. The, we knew that it wasn't a matter of if, um, but when we've talked about if or when COVID gets in a facility such as ours. Um, and now we're shifting that conversation to if or when we get a vaccine, because we really do feel like that is our next dose of relief. Um, and what will really help us mitigate and contain the spread and really allow us to get back to some sense of normalcy. So um, it's exciting to see that uh, other facilities across the state are having their initial vaccine clinics today. And we're very excited about when we will receive ours. But I thought before we start talking about what happens on December 30th, um, I thought today would be a great opportunity for us to share with you what we know as well as um, kind of what to expect over the next coming weeks and months. And so um, as grateful as we are that um, we're, we're so grateful that our federal and that our state officials have designated long-term care facilities, both residents and staff, to be the first recipients of the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, to be included in that first phase of distribution for us is very, very exciting knowing that it could be months before it's in everybody's arms, knowing that we're gonna be one of the first, we're really excited. And I spent most of the weekend um, telling folks, no, you're not a resident here at Sarah Christian Village. No, we can't give you VIP treatment. Uh, my mother says she's gonna come move in um, just so that she can be a resident and get the vaccine. I know everybody that wants it are very anxious to get it. So we're just very grateful um, to be in this first phase of distribution. Since day one, we have been working around the clock to protect our residents and our staff. And we're hopeful that this vaccine um, will be a life-saving turning point in our fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, for us, this vaccine is a shot of relief and it's a shot of hope. But before we begin, I wanna take care of a few housekeeping items. Um, we will be muting all microphones uh, just to eliminate any feedback or background noise so that we can um, push through this really quickly. And um, I encourage you though, there's a chat function. If you're on Zoom, there's a little chat box that you can press and you can send a message. And throughout the course of this hour, uh, we'll be answering those questions if you want to put them in the chat box. If you're listening on Facebook Live and you want to just drop a comment below, we'll be answering those as well. Elise, our VP of Marketing, hello Elise, will be fielding uh, those questions for us so that we make sure we don't miss an opportunity to answer any questions that you have. Um, I, we are recording this session so that if you, uh, in the event you wanna share it with your friends or family, or you have somebody that uh, you hoped to be able to catch it and miss the time, we'll be recording that and we'll post the link to that on our website uh, so that you can share that with your friends or your family. 
Um, the purpose of today's call is really just to talk about the actual process that we're going to use for the vaccine to answer some basic question and answers and um, just kind of what to expect over the next coming days and a month or so at Sarah Christian Village. Um, ultimately, each resident and their responsible party and our staff member will be the ones to decide whether or not they receive the vaccine. At this time, uh, the vaccine is not mandatory, although we really, really encourage it. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be our residents and our staff and our responsibilities, our, our responsible parties' decision whether or not uh, they take the vaccine. Um, but our hope is that we continue to be transparent, that we build confidence in um, those who may be somewhat hesitant of the, of the vaccine. We realize it's new. There is some unknown to it. But we also know what we've been through here on our campus. And uh, the risk for me of the vaccine uh, far um, exceeds what we have had to go through over the last couple months. And I, I don't ever want to have to go through that again. And I know my staff, uh, many of them are on this call. They would agree. I see them shaking their heads that they don't want to have to go through that as well. Um, obviously, this is a very rapidly changing situation. Since I started writing my notes last week, we now have approval of uh, the emergency authorization use for the Moderna vaccine. So there is um, constant changing information as even by the hour um, as this thing develops. So our goal is just to, to um, be upfront and as and transparent as possible um, and give you all the answers that you need to help ease any anxiety. And lastly, uh, we're not scientists. I'm not a scientist. Um, I was not in the lab with Pfizer when this vaccine was developed. And so I would just um, hope and ask for um, your appreciation of that. What we do in long-term care, we don't work in the lab. And so um, I really want to not have this be an opportunity for us to talk about whether or not um, what side of the vaccine debate that we're gonna be on, I wanna keep it productive. So um, whether you're for or against it, um, I, I know that even my staff, there are mixed emotions. I just want today's focus to be on what we know and how we're gonna move forward. So in anticipation of today's uh, session, we've gone through and put together a list of the most frequently um, asked questions that we are receiving uh, not only from our residents, but for our staff and from our staff and from our family members. And so I'm just going to kind of go through these one at a time and, and hope that I'll cover everything. But as I said, if, if, um, if I've missed something or if you have questions, feel free to drop those in the chat or the comment box and we'll make sure that you that we get to them. So with that being said, here we go. Um, so first question, burning question is why should our residents and staff get vaccinated? And we know that because it will save lives. Um, as I said, we have been um, through a very difficult time here at, on our campus, most specifically at our skilled nursing facility. We uh, did a great job of fighting off COVID for so many months, but uh, the fact of the matter is when it's as, as widespread in the community as it is, we knew it wasn't a matter of if, but when it would get into facilities such as ours. And so uh, once it did, it has a tendency and it did spread very, very rapidly. I'm excited to report we haven't had any new positive cases for residents here at the healthcare center since uh, November 23rd, which is almost a month. That seems hard to believe. Um, and we were, um, we've tested again today. We're waiting on results, but we aren't anticipating any um, new cases just based on what we've seen. Um, so we know that this vaccine does add one more layer of protection for our residents and our staff and our family members. Um, the vaccine has been has shown to be provide a great deal of, protect, of protection excuse me, against serious illness because of COVID. Um, and our hope our biggest hope is that this vaccine will allow us to get back to some sense of normal, that we can connect our family members with our residents, that I can hug my mother, um, that we can just really think about what, what just happened in 2020 with COVID. So really kind of hoping this is an end in sight. There's a lot of excitement right now in long-term care about this vaccine because we're all tired. We all have worked so hard uh, to protect our most vulnerable, and we want to make sure that we don't 
stop fighting now that we finish it through so that we can get you guys um, back in here so you can hug and squeeze on your moms and dads and grandparents. So with the number of COVID cases rising in the communities, right now the vaccine for us is the right answer. We do know um, from COVID that we do know that with COVID, uh, there is possible or potential for reinfection after three months. So knowing that our first case with our outbreak was in early October, um, January, we're gonna start to hit that three month mark. So the timing for the vaccine for us couldn't come at a better, um, at a better time. We'll be able to get the vaccine in the arms of our residents and staff um, prior to the um, point where there's an op where there would be an opportunity for somebody to get reinfected or we could potentially have another outbreak. So that's a um, the timing is great. As far as what vaccine we'll, we will be receiving, the state of Kentucky has chosen um, with this initial distribution that um, we will be administering the Pfizer vaccine. I've already. We will be administering the Pfizer vaccine, vaccine, and we have selected CVS Pharmacy as our, I've been talking a lot today, excuse me. <laughs> we have chosen CVS Pharmacy as our selected pharmacy provider. The pharmacy program partnership uh, for long-term care program is something that at the federal level has been developed. And basically what this program does is it allows for a vehicle to administer these vaccines into long-term long -term care facilities in a rapid manner. So each facility we was surveyed back in November to select that pharmacy provider that we would use. We chose CVS because we already have a partnership with CVS. And so CVS will be administering the Pfizer vaccine. The reason that we have the Pfizer vaccine is because it was the first vaccine to receive that emergency use. Um, and was the one that we could get quick, most quickly into our facility. So as part of the program, what's really nice about, it, what will be really nice about the vaccine administration process is if you've read anything about the Pfizer vaccine, there are some storage requirements. It has to be an ultra cold environment. I believe it's negative 70 degrees Celsius. Um, there are some um, handling requirements that, that um, Facilities such as ours, we're a standalone facility. We just don't have the capacity to, um, to take care of. And so CVS Pharmacy will be doing all the heavy lifting. They will come in, they'll store the vaccine, they'll administer the vaccine, and they'll do it all under the guidelines that the FDA is asking that they do. So that makes it really easy for us. All we've got to do is, um, not all, but we've got some heavy lifting to do as well but the pressure of how we're gonna get coolers and dry ice and where we're gonna keep it and who's gonna give it, uh, really um, that burden is lifted off of us. So we're happy about that. Um, so CVS, as far as when um, facilities will be receiving the vaccine, that's really beyond our control. The state has a list of all long-term care facilities across the state and I imagine they look at whether or not a facility has had a COVID outbreak and when the COVID outbreak took place. But the goal is for all long-term care facilities across the state to be immunized by March of 2021. Uh, so the fact that we're receiving it before the end of 2020 is very, very exciting news for us. To, as I said, today is the first day uh, that long-term care facilities in the state were started began to receive the vaccine. So CVS has already contacted us and given us uh, the dates that we will be using for our vaccine clinics. We don't really have a say in that. They're trying to get so many folks vac uh, vaccinated. We have to just say we'll be ready on December 30th from 10 to 4, which is when they're going to be here. We'll set up a clinic inside of our Life Enrichment Center where we'll be able to provide dist social distancing, adequate space for these vaccinations to take place, and also so that our residents and staff can hang out for 15, 20 minutes to make sure they don't have any adverse reactions. So we're working on our plan right now of how we will do this vaccine clinic, as well as obtaining the necessary consent and all the information that we need from our residents, staff, and family members. CVS will bring all of the supplies with them, all of the syringes, 
all, all the band-aids, the stickers, everything that we need to administer the vaccine, they're gonna do all the heavy lifting. And then of course, their team will actually administer the vaccines. Uh, so none of our staff will have to bear, bear the burden of additional responsibility that day. It'll, it'll come straight from CVS. So we're grateful for that. And additionally, one of the nicest things is that CVS will do all of the required reporting for us. So we are required to report all of our vaccine information, who gets it, how it was administered, what the reactions were, if there's any adverse reactions. So all of that information, CVS will do all that heavy lifting for us as well. So they're, they're going to be working around the clock, and, um, but it, it will be wonderful for us to not have to, to do that. And then also they're going to make sure that they adhere to all of the regulatory requirements as it relates to administration of the vaccine. Again, for us, a, a huge weight off our shoulders. So as, as I said, in November, we did enroll in the program. We selected CVS as our partner. And then right now, CVS and Walgreens is the other big player in the industry. They're all contacting these long-term care facilities and setting up these clinics. So we're excited about that. So the healthcare center, we do know December 30th will be their initial date. Each clinic, each vaccine clinic, there's three of them. Okay, so you have your first clinic on January, or excuse me, on December the 30th. Three weeks later, we don't have that exact date yet, but three weeks later, we'll have a second clinic. And then three weeks after that, we'll have a third clinic. We will also be holding clinics at Friendship Towers and our other uh, facilities on our campus. Right now, we do have an initial date, the first date for Friendship Towers, which is our assisted living facility. That date will be on January 6th, but they will also have three clinics as well. So we're going to um, have a big calendar and try to figure out who's on first and hope that we get to the right building on the right day, make sure we don't miss our vaccines. So as far as who gets vaccinated first, the CDC has recommended that healthcare workers and all long-term care residents and staff, that's wonderful that now, uh, initially it was not staff, but now it is. I think that everybody realizes the risk that our staff members um, are posing when they're going out and about in the community and coming back in the facility. But those are the highest level of priority for the first distributions of the vaccine. Um, this does include, there's all this talk back and forth of what's a long-term care facility. Is an assisted living facility a long-term care facility? And we've gone round and round, but um, they're, they're um, prioritizing facilities such as ours based on the level of care that we provide or based on the acuity of their residents. So obviously our skilled nursing facility will be first, then our assisted living facility will receive the vaccine second, and then followed by that, our independent living facilities. We don't have any dates. I know that's the burning question. The other one is, what about Bonta and Forest View? When will they receive vaccines? We don't know that yet. We did hear this morning that we expect to know that very soon, but we don't have dates for those clinics yet. So the initial shipments, and the reason they stagger it is the initial shipments, Kentucky, shipments, Kentucky is receiving um, about 25,000 doses that are targeted to long-term care facilities and staff. That, that will not cover everybody. So the, the goal is the highest acuity, highest level of care, they get done first and then follow suit with the um, preceding levels down. Um, the other big question we get is, are we mandating this for our staff and for our residents? We are not requiring our staff or our residents to take the vaccine. It is As I said earlier, it's a matter of personal choice. We hope that knowing what we've been through, that our staff and residents will uh, feel that the um, benefit to the vaccine is worse than the risk of what we've just been through. And so our goal over the coming days is a lot of education and just alleviating a lot of anxiety. Now let's talk about the Pfizer vaccine itself. So the Pfizer vaccine was the first vaccine to receive approval, uh, the emergency use approval from the FDA. And that means it's authorized to prevent COVID and the actual vaccine is for individuals that are 16 years of age or older and it has to be under this emergency youth authorization. So if you are a family member or a resident at the um, healthcare center, last week you probably received a letter 
and inside of that letter was a, a big old document. I've got it right here. It's a fact sheet. We'll post this uh, on our website and um, get it to you, but it's a fact sheet for recipients and caregivers um, about the Pfizer vaccine. And we're actually, um, we're providing this to every single person that has to make the decision of whether or not they're gonna get a vaccine because this is where all the science and all the information is to tell you specifically about the um, benefits and risks about the vaccine. So as far as how it's administered, it's, it's administered just like a flu shot. By this point, you've probably seen all over the news, uh, folks, pictures and videos of folks getting the vaccine. Um, it's gonna be in the muscle, in the arm. It's a very simple, um, quick and easy shot. And then you're done. Uh, you get, some are giving Band-Aids, some are giving stickers, but um, essentially it's just like what you would receive when you get a flu, when you get a flu vaccine. The only difference is it does require two doses. So you're gonna get your initial vaccine, uh, in our case on December 30th, and then 21 days later, you'll get a booster or the second dose. And so that's why we, ha we have three clinics to make sure that everybody at some point in those three clinics gets their two doses. And they do need to be given at least three um, weeks apart. The effectiveness of the Pfizer vaccine, the initial analysis shows that it is 95% effective against COVID. I don't know about you, but I um, that's exciting to me to 95% effective um, is very, very exciting. So this um, these studies were consistent uh, among adults across their age, gender, race, and ethnicity demographics. So that's very encouraging to us uh, to know that these um, Pfizer has been in the business of of making vaccines forever and a day. And um, I was, I had a discussion with um, one of the media folks earlier today and they said, you know, they've been working on this for 10 years. Well, they've been working on a vaccine for a pandemic for quite some time. So um, I'm really excited that it's 95% affected. Um, other question, will, will the Pfizer vaccine um, or, or the Moderna vaccine give me COVID? No, the answer is no. Uh, it does not contain any of the SARS of CoV-2, so you cannot get COVID from it. What you'll see is kind of like, that's what's a myth you hear, if I take the flu shot, I'll get the flu. This does not contain any, any, any SARS, so you're not gonna get COVID. You possibly could have some of the same reactions that you do when you get a flu shot. It will, um, those reactions are some, somewhat like flu lot, flu-like symptoms for a day or two, um, that's your body's response to building those antibodies that you need to fight off the virus. Um, there have been just a handful of cases so far with adverse reactions, but most of those cases are the result of an allergic reaction to somebody that, was, that had um, adverse reactions to other vaccines. So that's comforting to know. Um, as far as the storage and administration requirements are, that's a question we've received. Again, it's ultra, um, has to be in this ultra cold freezing freezer environment. Uh, the, again, the good thing for us is we don't have to worry about that. CVS is going to do the heavy lifting for us. So they'll be the ones that are responsible for storage and administration. What are the potential effects of the vaccine? Um, as I said, residents and staff may experience potential side effects that are similar to the flu shot, um, but these, but they can occur more frequently because you are getting two doses of this vaccine. But uh, the health and safety of our residents is always our top priority, which is why we will monitor um, our residents for adverse reactions. We have to report to the CDC, um, as well as our medical director, our local and state public health officials in the event we have any, any folks that do have reactions to the vaccine. Make sure that if you, um, like I said, we'll be posting the, the um, fact sheet for the vaccine. It's great reading material uh, to get more information about all of the uh, potential effects of it. How do I know that the vaccine, vaccine is safe? Um, I feel like my husband and I went around and around on this all weekend long because, <laughs> again, if you've not been in our environment, um, you, it might not be as easy of a sell for you. But this vaccine has gone through testing and clinical trials to ensure that it meets the highest safety standards. Again, the, it's tried, it's true, and um, 
the health and safety of our residents is always our top priority. And so we feel that uh, confident that the vaccine is a much better option than the risk of our residents getting COVID. Um, we know we have, as I said, with our outbreak, we have, um, it, it's been very difficult uh, for our residents and families and, and really our staff members to, to see folks get so acutely ill um, so quickly. So we feel like the um, risk of the, vi of the vaccine is, is much, much better than the risk of actually contracting COVID. So how are we gonna get our vaccinations done with staff and residents? We'll be able to, it's essentially, they look, want you to use a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every staff member, every re one resident, one staff member. So what we will be doing is we'll be staggering our vaccines for our staff uh, so that in the event they do have any symptoms or it puts them out for a day or so, we don't have the whole, the whole boat um, underwater. And so this will allow us to, um, have staff get the vaccine, and then the next round of clinic, the other half of the staff will receive it. So we're working on who will be the first recipients. Again, it's probably gonna be where um, we'll have folks fighting. I know we have a lot of staff that are eager to receive the vaccine. Um, do we have to have a physician's order to administer the vaccine? Um, the answer to that is no. But we are working very closely with our medical director, Dr. Richard, to make sure if we have any residents who have any uh, contraindications to the vaccine that we identify that prior to them receiving that vaccine. So the um, a doctor's order is not required and that really is getting too far down the weeds. It's about, about billing and how we get reimbursed for it and how we, we're not getting reimbursed for it. But um, normally we have to have a doctor's order. But the pharmacists are through this emergency approval, pharmacists and pharmacy interns, pharmacy technicians, they will be the ones administering uh, the vaccine. So there won't be an order that is required. Do residents and staff have to pay for the vaccine? No. The answer, the, the, short, the long and short of it is no. Uh, we will be collecting and, and billing it through the insurance. We won't, again, we're providing everything to CVS. They're doing all the heavy lifting for us. So we'll produce copies of insurance cards for our residents and staff members that opt to take it. And then obviously there's additional CARES funding for those that are uninsured or don't have access to um, their health insurance cards. We just write, if I had to pay for it out of my pocket, I would uh, just so that we, anybody that wants the vaccine can get it. What happens if staff or residents refuse the vaccine or aren't present when um, the vaccine clinics take place? So the beauty of us having three is hopefully two of the three of those clinics will be able to get staff and or residents at. If for some reason we should miss one, then uh, let's say I get the, the um, I don't get it to the third clinic, then I would work with CVS, we'll work with them and find out a way to make that, make allow me to get that booster. But again, it's not at this time, something that we are going to require just because it is so new. And I know that there's some hesitancy to it, but we're strongly encouraging everybody um, to get it. Um, the other side of that is, um, and I've been telling my staff, is we're lucky to be on this first line of um, administration for this vaccine. If for some reason our staff or our residents say that, um, mostly staff, if we say that they don't want the vaccine now, but in a month after the clinic has come and gone, they change their mind, unfortunately, um, it's fairly, very likely they'll have to wait months until it would be their turn to get it uh, along with the general public. So we wanna make sure folks know that it's not a, I can change my mind today and tomorrow and still have access to it. Um, okay, so um, as far as how we obtain consent, can, while a doctor's order is not required, obviously consent is. So if our residents typically make their own medical decisions, we will be going to them directly and talking to them and educating them about the vaccine and, and um, obtaining their consent, whether or not they want to receive it. 
Um, in, as with any medical decision, if that's not the case, we will work with the responsible party or the, um, or the POA to help make that decision and make sure we provide a lot of information. As I said last week, we sent letters as well as consent forms and some other information to all of our responsible parties. Those went out late last week. Uh, it's possible you may not have received those yet, but if not, they should be coming very soon. Um, or yours, again, just uh, reach out to us and we can get you a fresh copy. But ultimately, yes, we are gonna require a consent um, and it is required, CVS is requiring the consent. And so that's a process where we'll um, work with, we're trying to get all of those done in advance of the clinic because what CVS will wanna do on clinic day is come in vaccinate and leave. They're not gonna wanna get bombarded with a bunch of paperwork. So we're essentially gonna um, set them up so they're coming in for the dessert and then they're leaving and we're gonna do all the um, preparations ahead of time. So as far as what documentation is, cons is considered appropriate for consent, each pharmacy has their own requirements. We don't know what that is yet because we've not had that call yet with CVS. We're expecting to have more information about what the clinic will look like, but we do know there is um, there are two, two components. We can have a family member uh, give us written consent so that the day of, we can provide that consent on, our, on behalf of that family member, and that's kind of what we're working through right now. So as we know more, we'll make sure that we communicate that to all of our family members. Can a resident refuse the vaccine? Absolutely. Um, these vaccines are not mandated and residents do have their right, have the right to refuse the vaccine. Again, knowing what we've been through, vast majority of what we're hearing from families and residents is how, why do we have to wait till the 30th? Can't we get it any sooner? So I know everybody's eager to um, get that. As far as how we're communicating information to the, um, about the vaccine to our community, uh, we have had several earned media um, spots. We've been on most of the local uh, television stations and really our goal throughout this entire pandemic has been uh, to be as transparent as possible and communicate everything as we know it as, as quickly as we can. So we're using those vehicles. Um, we'll actually be on um, Channel 27 tonight, or it's the CW, I believe. Tonight, again, we've been on there several times. We'll be on there tonight at seven o'clock to talk more, probably just what we're talking about here. But we're using those vehicles as often as we can because we want to make sure we do everything we can to get the word out. And naturally, we're also using our Facebook page, our website, and just a lot of over communication right now. So I apologize if it's too much, but we'd rather have too much than not enough. So probably the number one question that we're getting is, okay, you get the vaccine, when can I see mom? When can I come back in and see and hug my mother or my father or, um, or my loved one? Look, Glenda popped up. When am I going to see my mom? I see her. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know that answer yet, but we do know this is the first big step in getting us there. We'll still have to wait on guidance from the state and our local health departments. But what we do know is if we can get Fayette County out of the red, that's the, what's standing in our way right now. On this incident map, um, you'll see that, that the whole state is, <laughs> is red, but we've got to get Fayette County out of the red. Um, and this is one of the ways that we'll be able to do that because the vast majority of cases are coming out of long-term care. So if we can if we can um, do our part to get Fayette County out of the red, that'll be one huge step closer for us to be able to have those in-person um, inside visitors. But the goal of the vaccine, we've already, the other side of this is we're already talking about how we reduce the amount of testing that we're doing. In tandem, you're, um, it, you're vaccinating more folks and then the, your need for testing goes down because you'll have folks that have had the vaccine. So. Right now, we have a testing plan in place through the end of February, um, assuming that all facilities are vaccinated by March. Uh, I'm hoping that it's, uh, it's very, very soon that we're able to do that. But we are still doing our window visits and our virtual visits. Um, 
and our FaceTimes and everything we can do to uh, continue to find ways to let love in. So um, just hang in there. You've been so patient so far. We're that we're almost there. Um, we're in the we're in the home stretch. So next steps and timeline for the um, on-site on -site clinic. As I said, the first one is December 30th. Um, we'll try to get everybody, as many people as we can done that day. Um, our goal is all of our residents that day that wish to be vaccinated will do on, um, on that day. And those are the residents at the healthcare center. And then of course, we'll do all the necessary reporting to the CDC and to the state and then we'll follow up um, from there. We don't know what our second and third clinic dates are yet, but we anticipate to know those uh, very, very soon. So right now, um, we're just focusing on the details that we need to make happen to ensure we have an efficient clinic so that when CVS gets here, uh, we've done all of the heavy lifting that we need to do so they can come in, administer the vaccines and leave so they can get to the next facility. We're relying on all of the local CVS locations. Uh, I think our team is coming from Georgetown. So that's how um, CVS is trying to figure out how to keep their stores uh, staffed as well as be in all these long-term care facilities. All of the staff at CVS um, will also, they will receive the vaccine obviously before they're coming into long-term care um, uh, the long-term care facilities as well. So just as another added layer of protection. Um, as far as where we, you can find additional information about the Pfizer vaccine, uh, there's, I mean, if you just Google COVID vaccine, there's uh, gobs of information out there, but the cvdvaccine.com uh, is a great website. Of course, the CDC, um, the FDA, and we've gotten a lot of information from our local um, Health Department and our state uh, Kentucky Department of Public Health, as well as our association. They've all been great. It's almost uh, too much information, to be honest. It's a COVID vaccine overload in our email boxes. But um, again, uh, this in this situation, more is better. Um, okay, so I am going to, I see several questions in the chat. Karen, I'm going to read them to you, and then that way you don't have to be looking in there, okay? Great. Okay, thank you. Go. Okay, the first one is, will there be restrictions imposed on residents who choose not to take the vaccine? So right now, um, what we are, you know, the, the, the premise that we're under is that we will still all wear masks, we'll still all social use social distancing, limit our group sizes. Um, so... You know, it's different when you have folks that when you're in flu season and you have folks that decline the flu shot, then we say, well, we, we need you to wear a mask. Well, in this case, there's a mask mandate already in place. So we don't know um, at this time what that will look like, but we expect it will be continue on as you're doing now. Just be careful and cautious um, when they're around other people that may also have not had the vaccine. If a resident has had COVID, is the vaccine still recommended? Yes, um, the CDC recommends that uh, you should not have had COVID for 14 days prior to taking the vaccine. But yes, it is recommended if you've tested positive or had COVID before. Uh, as I said earlier, there are, and we have seen um, four cases here at the facility where residents have been reinfected. So that chance to, is there, um, and that's a misconception even among our staff. I've already had it, why do I need the vaccine? Uh, because you can get it again. Okay, uh, this one comes from um, Bonta and Forest View. Once you have a date, how will Bonta and Forest View independent living residents be notified? I can answer that. You will probably hear us shouting from the rooftops <laughs> from here. So <laughs> you will find out right away. Yes, uh, we currently have two residents at Forest View that are um, positive and one resident at Bonta. So there is uh, certainly a need for the vaccine over there as well. Again, as far as um, how the how the uh, the vaccines are distributed is based on level of acuity. So we we hope to have that information very soon. And you bet we'll be uh, you'll hear Elise or me uh, shouting from the rooftop. 
Uh, will I be told the date that my husband gets the vaccine? Absolutely. Okay, this one is, okay. Will residents and their caregivers be made aware of the percent coverage of staff and residents that are opting to receive the vaccination? Um, we will most likely communicate that because we've been transparent so far. We did a survey among our staff a couple of weeks ago um, and we have right now about 50% of our staff who are concerned or have, have some hesitation and we're, um, we're working on those folks. And, uh, but again, ultimately it's their decision. And um, even if we vaccinate half the staff, that's, uh, that's far better than we are today. So I, I think there is some hesitation because it's so new um, because people wanna see, most folks that are saying they don't wanna take it say, I just kind of want to wait and see. And I, I, I understand that and I respect that. Um, the last thing I want to do is um, strong arm anybody. I mean, I really do, but I, I won't <laughs> strong arm anybody to do something they're not comfortable with. Okay, that, there's a little second part to that. They're curious if reallowing visitors or visitor restrictions will be lifted depending on the percent of staff and residents getting vaccinated. Uh, we do Oops, I'm sorry, I'm hearing lots of feedback. We don't know that information yet. We'll wait on guidance that we'll receive um, from the state as far as how to handle situations. Um, the idea is that we can get as many residents vaccinated as possible because if they get COVID, they're the ones that are at the most risk. They're the most vulnerable. So if we can protect them first, um, then we'll continue our infection control efforts and st we've stepped up a lot of things to try to keep, you know, to try to contain it. But um, our goal, primary goal is, is re all of our residents that we can get them vaccinated. Okay, and will we be managing the residents differently that get vaccine and those that don't? Absolutely not. Uh, we're, that's, we're not allowed to do that. Um, there is in all of the Q and A's that we're receiving is their standard of care will not change. Um, and I know you covered the cost. There is no cost. There is no cost at an assisted living for the test as well, or for the shot as well, correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, my mother is a resident in the assisted living area. She is on blood thinner. Notice that they say that you're supposed to let the, um, them know about the blood thinner, is there a contraindication for getting the vaccine? That might be. So that there, there's where I'm, I would probably want to rope in our medical director um, or that first, that individual uh, residence provider, that would be a discussion that they would have and come up with together um, and make that decision. Um, if you are starting with the Pfizer vaccine, will you get Will your second vaccine shot be also from Pfizer? Absolutely, yes. So your whatever you start with, your second dose or your booster will be the same as your initial. Okay. This one you've touched on. Um, once everyone or the loved one has the vaccine, is there a plan to lift visitor restrictions? Mainly because the question is, will loved ones, especially who are young and likely not to get be able to have the chance to receive the vaccine till later, is there going to be, a, you know, a restriction against those that in the public that have not had the vaccine from coming in? Um, whoops. Um, I'm getting lots of feedback. I don't know if that's me. Oh, okay. Um, you know, as far as what those visitor restrictions are going to look like. We're really going to have to wait and go on the guidance that we receive. Uh, we receive guidance from CMS, which is Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, from our local and state public health agencies. So uh, it would be a little premature for me to answer that question, not knowing what the guidance will look like. So we will have to kind of wait and see on that. Can you pair unvaccinated staff with unvaccinated residents? Oh gosh, that's a that's a good question. Um, 
I again, that's that's going to get too far in the in the science of it um, for what we know about it at this point. Again, I, I think there's a lot of questions of um, what happens when we have folks that don't receive the vaccine. And I'm assuming once we get through, let's get it in everybody that wants it, we'll sit down and take a look at how to handle those one off situations uh, for folks that don't receive it. OK. Um this one is kind of asking, have we had any hints? Sometimes we get hints from our associations if there's going to be new guidance coming through. Have we had any hints that there's any new guidance coming? Um, we have not had any hints. The only thing that we, the latest thing we have received is um, the testing guidance, which is encouraging because it looks like right now um, the testing plan is in place to the end of February. So that somewhat makes me believe that if we're not going to be required to do mass testing, that um, that might be a, a huge step for us as far as getting back to having visitors and, and what our new normal will look like. Are there any other questions? I think I got them all. One more question. Hi, Karen. Thanks for this. This has been very helpful. So I would assume too, I have multiple grandparents and my mother at Sayre. Um, for residents, a grandparent has said, we'll all get to go out after I get the vaccine, the first round. And I was like, I don't think that's true. So I assume the same, the same guidance for visitors coming in apply to residents going out, that they should sort of anticipate status quo for now until you guys get more guidance. Is that, is that right? You are 100% correct. Um, and it's, it's, it's a tough time right now because Christmas is just a few days away and everybody wants to um, spend Christmas with their families. And um, it's what the recommendation we have right now or the guidance that we have right now is really unless there is a medical necessity for the resident to leave, uh, they should stay here. And um, we haven't received any guidance yet of what happens after the first dose in between the second dose. Um, my guess is they're gonna say, get, let's get both doses in the arms and then we'll talk about um, and see what, what continues to happen with the community. So a lot of this um, has to do with what happens inside of our facility, but also is parallel with what is taking place, um, just not in Fayette County, but across the state in terms of the numbers of COVID cases. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't see any other questions. Hey, Karen, let me ask you a question. Should we drop these consent forms off to you? You are welcome to drop them by. Um, you can fax them or you can even email them to us, whichever way is easier. Um, we're happy to have them in whichever way is easiest for you. Uh, Karen did say consent forms were mailed. If you did not receive one, um, send me a direct message or a direct message through the chat here and uh, we will get one to you. And mail is kind of delayed because Christmas. So you're not late. For primary care physician, do we put Dr. Richard in his office address? or? Can you can just put Dr. Richard. You don't have to um, put his address. You can just list his name. What's his first name? John. John Richard. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> and he's been wonderful through this. He obviously has seen, um, you know, he's the medical director for some other facilities in town and he has seen um, the impact of what an outbreak will do in a facility such as ours. So he is very much on board and recommending um, folks get the vaccine. Again, the, um, the risk of what COVID could be like versus the risk of what the vaccine could do in his mind, um, the vaccine's the better choice. If you have a request to have the form emailed to you, if that's easier, um, email me at um, just email hope at sayre.us, H-O-P at sayre, 
S-A-Y-R-E dot U-S. And, and just to clarify, I just saw a question um, about a consent form. These consent forms were mailed to all of the responsible parties of residents that are in the uh, skilled nursing facility. So residents that are at Friendship Towers um, or our other facilities, these were not mailed to those. So if you're um, looking a family member or a resident in those two or those other three buildings and are looking for these consent forms, they have not gone out yet. We just received the clinic date uh, for Friendship Towers late last week. All right. Well, I tried to keep it underneath an hour and um, I, apologize. <laughs> I apologize for the rocky start um, and me losing my voice, but um, I just want to, in, in wrapping up, if we don't have any other questions, um, I just want to kind of take this opportunity to get on my, to get on our soapbox because, um, you know, personally, I'm very, very excited for the vaccine. I'm eager for SARE um, residents and staff to get it because it does provide us with hope and it is a sign of uh, relief for us. So I'm gonna leave you with this. this. These are some words that Ida Elliott and Ida is one of our um, nursing unit managers here at the skilled facility uh, that she shared on her, with, on her Facebook the other day. And it just, it really resonated with me. It says, as you watch healthcare workers lining up to get their COVID vaccine, Plenty of them have their own reservations about getting something that seems new and immature. They could even be scared, but they are lining up. They are doing it because they're desperate to see an end in sight. They're desperate to see normalcy in healthcare again. And I agree with Ida, uh, not being able to hug your loved ones or wearing spacesuits, <laughs> looking like astronauts to work, it's not normal. And uh, they are desperate. Our staff, you all, our families, our residents, everybody is desperate to see normal. And this vaccine right now is our hope to do that and that we will. So I applaud our staff. They have worked incredibly hard. They have made um, sacrifices that most of us uh, or most folks would walk away from. They've exposed themselves to COVID uh, to care for our most vulnerable population. When we were in our outbreak, we had over 50 staff members at the healthcare center test positive for COVID. Two of them ended up in the hospital. Uh, they've since recovered, but I, I can't even tell you how uh, much pressure we were under to contain the virus. And so it's something that none of us ever want to have to go through again in our lifetime. Um, but they've done it because this is what they've been called to do. They've been called to serve and they are serving the most vulnerable, vulnerable population, but they're tired. And so I'm proud to see them lining up uh, for the vaccine and they make me proud to work here. And personally, I'm excited to line up um, to, to get this vaccine so that I can hug my own mother and see my own family too, because we as staff members, many of us have made sacrifices uh, for our own families so that we don't be, we're not the ones that um, bring it here or bring it home. And so, it's just our, our final thoughts. We're so excited about this vaccine and it seems uh, that there's a lot of talk about it, but um, we know that it's the right next move for us to get to uh, the other side of COVID and that cannot come soon enough. So I appreciate um, if you're a staff member on here, I appreciate all that you have done. Um, and if you're a family member or a resident, I appreciate your patience and your prayers and the support. It really has been the fuel that has kept us going. So thank you. I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas and we'll see you soon. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone. Merry Christmas. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you all. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Elise. Thanks to all of your staff. Bye, Bye Ellie. Thank everybody. you for your questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> love you, Glenda. <laughs> I love you too, Elise. <laughs> Thank you for loving my mother. Oh, yeah. thank we you. Do. We love her. We love her. <laughs> thank you for all you do for my mom. Oh, y'all are so thank sweet. Bye-bye. Everybody have bye a good bye. day. Bye-bye. <laughs>